This whole thing started for me uh, when I lost my job. I was teaching at a college in Boston and the college closed. And I went home that night and my son, who was, uh, I think he was about three at the time, said, Dad, will you tell me a bedtime story? And one thing led to another and an aardvark popped into my head. And then he wanted me to draw him a picture of what it looked like. And uh, he liked the story. It was about an aardvark who was unhappy with his nose. And uh, I was looking for a job. I took it into a publisher in Boston, Little Brown, and they said it needed a lot of work, this story. And uh, I worked on it for about six months. It got published. Uh, and I remember waiting for my first royalty check. I thought, all right, I'm going to buy a new car. <laughs> it's going to be really good. And I think it was $68. And uh, I bought uh, shoes for my son <laughs> and some groceries. <laughs> And then um, PBS came to me, and they wanted to do something that I thought was very worthwhile. They wanted to use my characters to make kids want to read. Use television and animation, which are two very powerful forces with kids, to uh, do something positive for them. And my good friend Fred Rogers was very helpful in helping me, guiding me uh, as I started out, you know, and he was just amazing uh, as an example for how to use television to not only entertain kids, but to educate them. The best ideas for stories come from things that happen in real life. That's where all my ideas come from. Maybe my kids, people that I know, families I know, or when I visit a school like today, you never can tell what I'm going to see, what somebody's going to do, and it will stick in my head, and when I get home, I just can't stop thinking about it, and I want to write about it. Starting out sort of as a solo act, I have um, had the good fortune of working with other wonderful writers who have this special gift for writing a screenplay, which is something that I don't feel like I could do very well. But uh, I was surprised also to see how closely making a story for television and making a story in a picture book are alike. But I've also worked with um, most of the team has been there since the start, 20 years now. It's, it's now the longest-running animated children's television show in history. I mean, Sesame Street's been on longer, but it's not an animated show. So uh, that is an honor, and PBS wants more shows from us. So, you know, I think we have uh, some more time to, to do stories for kids. But uh, I, I, I love working with a team, and uh, I'm really lucky to have a good team. What else is here? He wears glasses. And this is an example of where you make good stories. Every day that are around us, we just have to keep our ears open and our eyes open to find the stories. This is a treat for me. Uh, I, I save several days a year to visit schools around the country. And uh, I want to get kids excited about writing their own stories and share my uh, love and excitement for what I do. I love my job, and I love going to work every day. And, I, you know, when I look out at all these kids in the cafeteria or the auditorium, wherever we're doing our talks, and I know that some of these kids are going to grow up and they're going to write stories and become authors or make television shows. And just walking down the hall in this school, you can see the energy, you can feel the energy here. The walls are filled with kids' ideas and stories and creativity. I, you know, I'm just here to pass along what it is I know and uh, have some fun doing it. To connect with kids and families like this is a real gift to me.